as campaign intensified for the upcoming general election, what does all this mean for you, the voter? What do the candidates have to offer? How prepared are agencies charged with the election process? Join John Curia and Safina Cheng on Kenya Decides. This and every Tuesday from 10 p.m. on KBC Channel 1 as we unpack elections 2022 with a panel of various stakeholders. Make informed electoral decisions. <laughs> The National Youth Service will hold its pass out graduation ceremony this Friday, 10th of June, 2022. His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta will be the guest of honor during the pass out parade to be held at NYS Training College in Gilgil, Nakuru County. Follow the proceedings live on KBC Channel 1 this Friday from 9 a.m. NYS, go on, be great. Boresha maisha na bima. Maisha haya tabiriki. Huenda kukawa na panda shuka. Iwapo utashindwa kulipia bima yako malipo ya kila mwezi, usiwe na wasiwasi. Zungumza na kampuni inayokupa huduma za bima ili ubadilishe bima yako kuwa bima iliyolipiwa tayari. Hutahitajika kuendelea kulipa malipo ya kila mwezi japo kampuni inayokupa huduma za bima bado itawajibika kukulipa faida unayostahili katika chaguo hili. Pata bima ili kuhakikisha yote yatakuwa sawa. Jambo mpenzi mtazamaji karibu kwenye darubini ya Channel 1 leo kiwanda tarehe 7 mwezi wa 6 mwaka 2022 ambapo mtazamaji tumekuwa ndani ya mengi aliyojiri hii leo zikiwa taarifa kuhusiana na kuidhinishwa kwa gombeaji mbali mbali kwenye vitengo mbali mbali kwenye ulingo wa siasa lakini kwanza mtazamaji tupate vidokezo Nipigo jingine kwa Mike Sonko IBC kikataa kumuidhinisha kuwa ni ugavana Mombasa. Mrengo wa zimio la umoja wa shauri kina mama utachizia karate kura yao. Watu wengine saba wafia ajalini katika eneo la kanyonyo barabara kuu ya thika mwingi. Jambo mtazamaji sasa karibu tuweze kukujuza taarifa hizo kwa kamilifu jina langu ni Sarafina Robi mwenzangu wa ishara ni Lensa Odingo kumbuka pia unaweza kutupata mbashara pale Facebook YouTube na Twitter at KBC Channel 1 at Sarafin underscore Robi na mtukianza mtazamaji ni kuwa tunazo taarifa kuhusiana na kuidhinishwa kwa wagombeaji mbalimbali na kwa sasa tunaungana na mwanahabari wetu Junei Karisa ambaye yupo pale Mombasa aliweza kutujuza kulikoni Junei kama unanipata tueleze 
na hujambo Sarafina Robi tunakujia moja kwa moja katika shule ya KSG ambapo hii leo uh, wagombeaji watatu walikuwa wanalasilisha makaratasi yao ili kuweza kuidhinishwa na tume kuu ya IEBC na um, kufikia asubuhi uh, mgombea kupitia tikiti ya UDA um, uh, Hassan Omar aliweza kuidhinishwa na, ku, uh, na, ku, na kutoka kisha baada yake akafuatiwa na uh, gavana aliyekuwa gavana na Nairobi Mike Sonko ambapo hili alikuwa ameandamana na mgombea mwenza ambaye ni mbunge wa Kisauni Ali Menza, Menza Mbogo ambapo hili leo bado wapo katika chumba kilichoko nyuma yangu na ni kuwa um, yule anayesimamia zoezi zima la kuidhinisha wagombeaji ameweza kukataa omi lake la kuweza kuwania uh, kiti cha ugavana hapo uh, ilipofika saa tisa uh, hapo mchana aliweza kusema kuwa um, gavana ameweza kuja na makaratasi chapa badala ya makaratasi halisi ya shahada yake ya chuo kikuu lakini ilipofika mwendo wa saa hivi aliweza kuleta makaratasi yake na uh, uh, anayesimamia zoezi hilo Biswal Hayusuf kuweza kuidhinisha lakini kizungumkuti kinakuja mahali ambapo Biswal anasema kuwa uh, kuna kifungu ambacho Mike Msonko ameweza kukiuka ambacho ni kifungu cha sabini na saba cha uh, katiba ambapo wanasema lazima uh, mwenyekiti wa IEBC uh, wafula chebukati kutoa uh, uh, kutoa hatua zingine kuli, uh, kulingana na vile alivyokuwa amesema awali ni kuwa Mike Sonko haruhusiwi uh, hataweza kuidhinishwa iwapo atakuja mbele ya kamati hiyo kwa sababu bado ingali ana kesi kotini za kuweza kungatuliwa mamlakani na lazima uh, Mike Sonko ameweza kukataa um, uh, kukataa uh, malalamishi ama uh, yale ambayo ameweza kusema na Biswal haki sema kuwa ni haki yake kama mgombea kuja mahali hapa na kuweza kuidhinishwa kwa sababu kesi zake bado zingali kotini na bado hazijaweza kuamuliwa kwa hivyo Biswal ha anaweza kumuidhinisha uh, kisha uh, pale ambapo koti itakapotoa uamuzi wataweza kubatilisha iwapo koti itatoa maamuzi ambayo hayatakuwa sawa lakini Biswal ha amesimama kidete akisema kuwa hawezi kumuidhinisha mpaka kesi yake ambayo inamkabili uh, kotini ambayo hiyo ni ya kungatuliwa mamlakani ama kizungu wanasema impeachment iweze kutolewa uh, mahakamani na hicho ndo kizungu mkuti ambacho kinaendelea kwa sasa bado sonko amekatalia kutoka uh, katika chumba kile mpaka aweze kuidhinishwa lakini biswal ha amesema mpaka uh, mwenyekiti wa tume ya IEBC aweze kutoa uh, aweze kutoa um, taarifa yoyote kuhusiana na mgombea huyo ili aweze kuidhinishwa hapa. Kwa hivyo tuko hapa bado tunamsubiri aliyekuwa gavana wa Nairobi Mike Mbuvi Sonko aweze kutoa uh, uh, semi zake kuhusiana na ma, ma, malalamishi yake, aweze kutuambia ni vipi anavyostahili. Lakini kuna kitu kimoja tu ambapo wameweza kuwalezewa ni kuwa kuna siku kumi bado ana, anaweza kuja anaweza ku uh, kwenda kuwasilisha malalamishi yake na anaweza kusaidiwa ili kuweza kuidhinishwa lakini Sonko amesema hatoki leo mpaka zoezi lima likamiliki lakini Biswal ha amesema yale aliyoambiwa uh, na bwana Tebukati bado yanasimama na kwa hivyo uh, Mike Mbuvi Sonko leo hataweza kuidhinishwa kwa hivyo tuko hapa tumekita kambi tutakuletea matokeo haya moja kwa moja lakini kwa sasa nakurudisha kwako Sarafina Robi hivi tukiendelea tu kuangalia kama kweli IBC taweza kubati, eh, ku, ku, kuweza kubatilisha uh, uamuzi wake ama itaendelea kusimama kidete kuwa Mike Mbuvi Sonko leo hii hataweza kuidhinishwa. Na mshukran sana Junei Karisio ni mwanahabari wetu ambaye yupo pale katika maeneo ya Mombasa ambapo anafuatilia shughuli nzima ya kuidhinishwa hapo Mombasa ambapo ameweza kutujuza masebu yanayomkumba aliyekuwa gavana wa Nairobi Mike Mbuvi Sonko ambaye hajaweza kuidhinishwa mtazamaji kwa sababu mbalimbali moja wapo ikiwa ni kuwa ameweza kupeleka makaratasi chapa badala ya makaratasi halisi na vile vile ilani moja mbili kwa imetolewa na wafula cha Bukati lazima itolewe ndipo iweze kuidhinishwa na vile vile ana kesi nyingi kwa 
nyingine ambazo zinafuatiliwa. Kwa hivyo mtazamaji, huyo mwanahabari wetu Juni ataendelea kutujuza kulikoni kwa ni kufikia sasa kama alivyosema ni kuwa gavana huyu ama alikuwa gavana Nairobi Mike Sonko kwa sasa amegoma amesema toke eneo hilo hadi aidhinishwe. Kwa sasa hapa studio tunaendelea na taarifa na ni kuwa baadhi ya wagombea urais ambao uteuzi wao kuania kiti hicho kwenye uchaguzi mkuu ujao ulikataliwa na tumehuria uchaguzi na mipaka IEBC wameapa kwenda mahakamani kupinga uamuzi kwa tume hiyo watu hiyo kundi hilo linalojumuisha Jimmy Wanjigi wa Safina Ikuru Aukot wa Thade Wellens na mgombea huru Ruben Kigame limesema tume ya IEBC iliwachuja kwa njia isiyo halali baada ya kukamilika kwa zoezi la kuidhinisha wagombea urais la tume huru ya uchaguzi na mipaka IBC kiongozi wa chama cha Safina na aliyenuia kuonea urais Jimmy Wanjigi mwenzake wa Third Way Alliance Ikuru Court na Ruben Kigame umeishtumu tume hiyo kwa kile wanachosema ni mapendeleo kwenye zoezi hilo Ruben Kigame aliyekuwa akiwania kama mgombea huru kupitia wakili wake John Haminwa alisema utaratibu wa kutimiza matakwa ya IBC ulikuwa mgumu haswa inapotiliwa maanani alilazimika kutembea katika kaunti itajika kukusanya sahi hii na vitambulisho licha kuwa na ulemavu. He has gazetted four candidates. You all know them. He has also issued a list of those that did not qualify. Now, Kenyans, are you aware that I don't appear in the list of those who are passed as the four? and i don't even appear in the list of those who are disqualified mgombea mwingine aliyetemwa jimi wanjigi kwa kutokuwa na shahada ya degree alisema tume hiyo ina mhujumu lakini ameapa kutetea haki yake come the 2013 election was that there will be a national union of a new government that would ensure that the inalienable rights of that new constitution were going to be adhered to and that the government that was coming into place in 2013 was going to be a government that was pro reform to that constitution kwa upande wake ukuru okota amesema kutoidhinishwa kwake kwa madai ya kutokuwa na shahada ya degree ni hujma kwani tume hiyo ilimuidhinisha kuania kiti hicho katika uchaguzi uliopita in 2017 on the 28th of may 2017 ibc issued me with a certificate to run as president Last fifth 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 uh, uh, last Sunday IBC denied me that certificate on the excuse that my degree certificate is not certified. Nikiripotia darubini mimi ni Zainab Said. Na mtukisalia hapo hapo kwenye ulingo wa siasa mtazamaji ni kwa seneta wa Nairobi Johnson Sakaja ameidhinishwa na tume huru ya uchaguzi na mipaka IEBC kuwa ni ugavana katika kaunti ya Nairobi Sakaja anayewania kwa tiketi ya chama cha UDA ameahidi kuboresha utoaji hudma katika jiji la Nairobi Baada ya sinto fahamu kugubika chama cha UDA tawi la Nairobi kwa saa kadhaa hatimaye tume ya IEBC imemuidhinisha seneta wa Nairobi Johnson Sakaja kwa ni ugavana katika kaunti ya Nairobi. Sakaja ameahidi kuboresha huduma na kuinua hadhi ya jiji la Nairobi. We've had all that fuss that has been going around about uh, qualifications. I am sufficiently qualified to run for Nairobi. The documents are presented are the same documents I presented five years ago when I vied for senator. I'm still the same Sakaja uh, and everything is, is verifiable. Esther Thairu Waringa vile vile aliidhinishwa kuania kiti cha ugavana katika kaunti ya Nairobi kama mgombea huru. It has been labor intensive from the word go from the beginning when we began this journey as independent very difficult collecting collection of the IDs uh, copies of IDs then putting in the excel sheet Huko Muranga Seneta Irungu Kangata ambaye alikabiliwa na masaibu sawia hatimaye alidhinishwa na IEBC kuwa ni gavana katika kaunti hiyo We are happy despite efforts by our detractors to bar Dr. Wini uh, from being part of us that will not succeed. Seneta wa Migori Ochilo Ayako pia alipata idhini ya IEBC kwa ni ugavana wa kaunti hiyo kwa tiketi ya chama cha ODM. Our first agenda is good governance that uh, establishes an efficient and effective government. government. Wengine waliopata idhini ya IEBC kwa ni ugavana ni pamoja na Patrick Olentutu wa chama cha UDA anewania kiti cha Narok. Wengine walioidhinishwa na IEBC ni Mwenda Gatabaki wa chama cha Safina ambaye ndiye mgombea pekee wa kike wa gavana kaunti ya Kiambu. 
my nomination is a big success for the women of Kenya. When we started this journey, we were about 26 counties. 26 counties had women running for governor positions. Right now, we are about nine. Patrick Wainaina Marufu Jango wa Kiambu pia alidhinishwa. There have been so many independent candidates who have been able or who are capable and uh, much better probably than the people who are sponsored by the parties. But these people, they have been locked out. Na yu Francis Kimemi alidhinishwa kutetea kitichake katika county ya Nyandarua kwa tiketi ya chama cha jubilii. Mbakisha miaka mitano peke yake katika hii county na ajua kwamba wanaichu wa Nyandarua atanipatia hiyo round two. Niweze kumaliza mirandi ambao nilianzisha. Wakati huo huo, mwitaliano mwenye uraia wa Kenya Franco Esposito ni mongoni mawaniaju waliopata idhini ya kuwania ugavana katika county ya kilifi akiwa na mgombe ya muenza wake Samuel Karisa. I will ask for more on top of the vote. I will ask you to spouse my vision which will create a better future for your children, a county that provides excellence in education for all children of Kilifi County. Nancy Okware Darubini. Na mshukran sana Okware kwa taslifu hiyo mtazamaji kama unavyoona sisi zinaendelea kuchacha nasi tunaendelea kuhakikisha kwa tunakujuza kila linalojiri. Na pale kwenye mitandao yetu tunaona wengi tayari mmetuma jumbe akiwemo Ishmael Gwela anasema anatazama Njathi Nthenge anasema anatazama Palengara akiwa na mwenzake Frank Makutesa Oyando Wycliffe anatazama kutoka Kisi Muhia wa Kandara anasema anatazama kutoka Kandara Crispin Orao anasema pia anatazama kutoka Kisumu. Kwa sasa mtazamaji tunachukua mapumziko mafupi sana tunarejea na taarifa zaidi usiende mbali Kupata lazima nishike kama sikiza tuni yako bonyeza star 811 star 962 hash Lazima nilike mapema na sasa hivi ushika hesabu mapema utakaasirika Unachoa mimi nikiwa moto wa marathon na kwa niko na experience kabisa niko na experience if you don't hurry you will not break the record Okay watch and shake hesabu Kupata lazima nishike bonyeza star 811 star 962 hash star 811 star 962 hash you shine. Do you have a new story to share with KBC? Get in touch swiftly on email news at kbc.co.ke or call 0723-892-654 or 0734-780-124. Na mtazamaji unaendelea kutazama darubini ya Channel 1. Kumbuka unaweza kutupata mbashara vile vile pale Facebook, YouTube na Twitter at KBC Channel 1 na @sarafin_robin. Tukiendelea na taarifa ni kwa serikali imesitisha uzinduzi wa maeneo mapya ya utawala huko Mashariki na Kaskazini Mashariki mwa nchi pamoja na shughuli za ugawaji mashamba katika sehemu za mipaka ya kaunti hadi baada ya uchaguzi mkuu wa tarehe tisa mwezi Agosti mwaka huu. Waziri wa Usalama wa Kitaifa Dr. Fred Matiangi alisema hatua hiyo itazuia ushawishi wa kisiasa kwenye shughuli hizo na pia kuchochea mashikamano ama ushikamano baina ya jamii mbalimbali huko Mashariki na Kaskazini Mashariki. Serikali imesimamisha uzinduzi wa maeneo mapya ya utawala na uteuzi katika nyadhifa mbalimbali kaskazini mwa nchi ili kuepusha mizozo wakati huu wa msimu wa uchaguzi. Waziri wa Usalama wa Kitaifa Dr. Fred Matiangi alisema atashauriana na Wizara ya Ardhi kusitisha shughuli za ugavi wa ardhi katika sehemu hiyo ambao umetajwa kuwa chanzo kikuu cha mizozo ya kila mara. With a view to carrying on with those that are not controversial and putting on hold those that are controversial because uh, if we put so many balls in the air we are going through an electoral season and then we are trying to solve controversial land adjudication at the same time prepare for elections 
uh, one could be held hostage by the politics of the time and, and cause unnecessary conflict among us our people. Waziri pia amewahimiza viongozi katika kaunti ya Meru kuthamini pendekezo la kupiga marufuku ngamia kutoka kaunti jirani kuingia kwenye kaunti hiyo kutafuta lishe. We must respect their, their authority and their powers according to the constitution but we are going to use lawful structures to request them to reconsider that decision because it's unnecessarily discriminative and and and, and whatever objective they have they can still achieve it without going that direction wakati huo huo baadhi ya wakazi wa kijiji cha Kimugandura kaunti ya Laikipia wametoa wito kwa halmashauri ya kuthamini utendakazi wa polisi ipoa kuchunguza mauaji ya kijana mmoja aliyewawa wakati wa makabiliano na wafugaji wakazi hao walidai kuwa mvulana huyo wa umri wa miaka saba kwa jina Apiti Lekartua aliwawa na maafisa wa usalama na kupigwa risasi walipokuwa wakipileka ngombe kwenye kituo cha polisi cha sehemu hiyo baada ya kuwapata kwenye shamba moja la kibinafsi awache mambo ya pita kama nataka uchunguzi ya, eh, 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 ya, ya kijana waje tuchunguze na njia yote ile paka tuhakikishe tumeona hiyo sukari atutosheki Irene Mchuma Udim Darubini na mna sasa tukirejelea siasa ni kuwa naibu rais William Ruto amesema serikali ya muungano wa Kenya kwanza itamakinika zaidi na kuinua wafanyabiashara wadogo wadogo kama moja wapo ya mbinu ya kuinua uchumi wa taifa hili Ruto ambaye alipeleka kampeni ya Kenya kwanza uko wajia amesema serikali yake itanzisha hazina ya kuwasaidia wafanyabiashara wa nguo za mitumba kugeukia ile ya uzaji wa nguo mpya kwa minajili ya kuimarisha pato na kubuni ajira wale wote wanafanya biashara ya aina zote wale wanafanya biashara ya mtumba watu karibu milioni mbili wanafanya hiyo biashara mimi nataka niwahakikishie hakuna mtu ataharibu biashara yenu sisi tutafanya kazi na nyinyi wafanye biashara wa mtumba ili nyinyi katika clothing industry tuwasaidie ili tutengeneze textile manufacturing and textile industry katika program yetu ya bottom up nyinyi ndio mtakuwa waekezaji katika clothing industry nyinyi ndio mtakuwa investors katika textile industry ambayo itatupatia nafasi ya kukuza kutoka mitumba mpaka ifike ile kiwango ya juu ile ya, ya watu ambao wanatumia katika industry kubwa na sisi wote tukubaliane kwamba textile industry ni textile industry ambayo iko na umuhimu na maana katika taifa letu la Kenya Naam tukisalia bado kwenye siasa ni kwa mgombea mwenza wa urais wa muungano wa azimio la umoja wa Kenya Martha Karua amewarai wanawake kote nchini kumchagua mgombea urais wa muungano Hore Odinga ili waweze kunufaika pakubwa katika serikali ijayo Karua ambaye alitetea manifesto ya muungano huo wa azimio aliwataka wanawake kupiga kura kwa busara na kuchagua serikali itakayozingatia maslahi yao akiongea huko Mombasa wakati wa maadhimisho ya mwaka wa sabini tangu kubuniwa kwa shirika la maendeleo leo ya wanawake nchini Karua alisema wanawake lazima wawe kwenye mstari wa mbele katika kuhakikisha kwamba wanaochaguliwa ni watu wenye maadili mema viongozi walioandamana naye walipigia debe muungano wa azimio na kuahimiza wanawake kumchagua Raila Odinga wakati wa uchaguzi mkuu wa mwezi Agosti Kama wamama Tukikosa kusaidia nchi yetu kusimama wima tutakuja kulia na watoto wetu na hiyo hatutaki. Kwa hivyo lazima tuangalie mwenendo wa kila mtu wa kila kikundi kinachotafuta kura. Na lazima ujiulize ni nani utaamini ataunganisha wa Kenya na kusimamisha nchi. Na sisemi tu kwa nyadhifa ya juu. Mi nasema Anza na yule anataputa kiti ya MCA ward yako. Kisha uende kwa gavana. Kisha uende kwa member of parliament na women rep na senator. Umalizie na urais. 
Siku nyingi tunaangalia tu rais tunasahau viti zingine. Tunasema kwa asimio iko baba kea. Lakini ni lazima serikali ya kitaifa ifanye kazi na serikali ya county. Many families, households, jamii hawataki hata kupata pesa ya jioni ya kula chakula, chakula ya jioni. Akasema 2 million households zitapata 6000 shillings kila mwezi. We are going to stand with you and we do. Kuna wamama wengi sana wanawaombea wewe na baba kila siku. The prayers are going to see us through because Kenya needed a woman of integrity. Serikali ya baba na mama wameweka katika mstari wa mbele ni kuweza kuhakikisha wale ambao ni wajane na single mothers waweze kupata njia mwafaka ya kusomeshwa kuregeshwa katika mashule na mengi mengineo na mtazamaji kwingineko ni kwa watu saba wamefariki kufuatia ajali mbaya ya barabarani iliyohusisha basi na gari la binafsi katika eneo la Kwasili kwenye barabara kuu kati ya Thika na Garissa akithibitisha ajali hiyo mkuu polisi kwenye kaunti ndogo ya Yata America Shenjoki alisema gari hilo dogo aina ya Sienta lilikuwa likijaribu kupita trailer lipogongana ana kwa ana na basi ambalo lilikuwa safarini kutoka Garissa hadi Nairobi kama tunaelekea kwa barabara yetu ndio tulikumbana na gari moja ndogo ilikuwa inaelekea upande wa mwingi sasa ikapoteza mwelekeo ikakuja pande yetu ikakuja kwa seti yetu ya kwenda Nairobi sasa yule dereva basi amengangana amengangana hiyo gari ili amengangana sana na bado na basi ni kidogo ikabidi aigonge ikakosa mwelekeo ikaenda pande ya right ikaenda pande ya right ikagonga chini karol mara mbili ikapatana na hii bus ikapatana na hii bus ya kujui wa kasukumana na mtazamaji sasa karibu kwenye safu ya biashara ambapo benki ya dunia imebashiri kuwa kiwango cha ukuaji wa uchumi wa nchi hii kitapungua hadi 5.5% kutoka 7.5% mwaka 2021 kutokana na vita kati ya Urusi na Ukraine viwango duni vya mvua na hofu kuhusu uchaguzi mkuu wa mwezi Agosti ripoti ya hivi punde ya benki ya dunia ya benki ya dunia ama benki kuu ya dunia pia inakisia bei ya juu ya bidhaa itasababisha kuongezeka kwa gharama ya uagizaji bidhaa ukuzaji bidhaa nje ukiathiriwa na kuzorota kwa hali ya kiuchumi duniani taarifa kamili ni kwenye mseto wa biashara kana na makisio ya hivi punde benki ya dunia ilibashiri uchumi wa Kenya utaimarika kutoka 4.9 hadi 5.5 kutakana na mikakati kabambe ya ufufuzi wa uchumi baada ya janga la covid-19 mwaka jana Benki ya Dunia ilikuwa imebashiri kwa uchumi wa Kenya ungekuwa wa kiwango cha juu lakini ukuaji huo umeathiriwa na uvamizi wa Urusi dhidi ya Ukraine jambo ambalo limesababisha kuongezeka kwa bei ya mafuta mbole ya nangano. Ripoti hiyo inaonyesha kuwa vita nchini Ukraine na vikwazo vilivyowekewa Urusi vinatarajiwa kupunguza kwa asilimia sufuri tano kiwango cha pato jumla ya kitaifa mwaka huu na kisha asilimia sufuri tatu mwaka 2023 hasa kutokana na hasara za kibiashara zisizokuwa za moja kwa moja. Wakati huo huo wasanifu mijengo wameelezea wasiwasi mchipuko wa miradi ya ujenzi isiyoidhinishwa humo nchini. Chama cha wasanifu mijengo humo nchini kimesema zaidi ya asilimia sabini ya miradi ya ujenzi inayoendelea haijazingatia utaratibu wa uidhinisho na kuhatarisha maisha ya wengi. Chama hicho kimetoa wito kwa serikali za kaunti kwa ajili wa taalamu walioidhinishwa ili kupunguza maafa yanayotokana na mijengo duni ambayo imeporomoka humo nchini. If you have people who have the capacity and the knowledge of this kind of projects basically have proper uh, properly registered architects engineers to actually approve and overlook all the projects being submitted by their colleagues it will actually be seamless even if they are to come and do the work we need to have uh, a bigger share in terms of the work they need to partner with the locals 
Hatimaye wakulima wa Njugu Karanga katika kaunti za Busia, Homa Bay na Siaya watunufaika na mafunzo ya kudhibiti kovu yani aflatoxin. Huku ulimwengu ukiadhimishwa siku ya usalama wa chakula duniani. Mafunzo hayo yaliyotolewa na mpango wa kuboresha mauzo uliofadhiliwa na jumuiya ya Ulaya yatawapa wakulima maarifa kuhusu mbinu mwafaka za kuhakikisha usalama wa chakula kutoka shambani hadi kwa ununuzi. Stability system is a very important component for food and um, it's supposed to assist um, even consumers uh, in case when there's a um, uh, non compliance or contamination in food uh, the, the the retailer or supermarket or mamamboga then mamamboga can be able to track back on the person who supplied them and eventually if possible to the producer and entertainment industry has evolved over the years. It is at such times that our destinies are written. Will we rise up in courage? Or die in cowardice? Who are the movers and shakers in film and theater? Get trendy as we review locally produced films and stage drama every Wednesday at 9 p.m. on Cinemas and Theater. Brought to you by the Kenya Film Commission. Film Kenya, Capture Africa. Na mtazamaji sasa karibu kwenye taarifa za sporti ambapo wachezaji watatu wanaoshiriki kriketi ugebuni wanatarajiwa kujiunga na timu ya taifa ya kriketi wiki hii kabla ya kushiriki katika michuano ya kriketi ya ligi ya dunia mfumo wa msini overs baina ya tarehe 12 na 20 mwezi huu jijini Kampala Uganda Kenya imepangiwa kumenyana na Uganda Tanzania visiwa vya jezi Bermuda Hong Kong na Italia Wachezaji hao watatu wanajumuishwa wachezaji wawili wenye makao yao nchini Uingereza, Irfan Karim na Tanzil Sheikh na Alex Obanda anayechezea kilabu cha nchini Uganda kulingana na kocha mkuu David Obuya, wachezaji hao wanatarajiwa kujiunga na wenzao kabla ya kuelekea Kampala Ijumaa hii. With a positive mind, uh, where we stand in the log doesn't look too good because we are around second last in the log. So we look to play well in Uganda, win all the games then push to the number one position and then now we've got also another chance coming in a month's time in Jazzy and also look to play well so that we can qualify for the World Cup. We are optimistic that we're gonna we're gonna do well in Uganda because we need to win most of the games for us to, to get a chance to qualify for that World Cup. Timu hiyo ambayo imekuwa kampeni kwa mwezi mmoja sasa ina matumaini ya kufanya vema katika michono hiyo siku nane itakayozileta pamoja timu kutoka kundi la tatu na nne. Kenya is more senior because having played uh, more World Cup than any other team uh, on those associate uh, teams you're going to play with. So I think Kenya is ranked high there. We are number one ranked according also to the ranking. So we need the boys to pull up their socks and play well so that we can maintain our status. Yes. Working on in the squad is especially the middle orders playing spin. I've been focusing a lot on playing spin. That's where we've been uh, not doing well especially in the 50 over game in the middle overs and that's what we've been focusing on for the last one month and I think now the boys are ready. Mchezaji wa timu ya taifa mzao Afrika Kusini Neil Mugabe ana imani ya kujumuishwa katika kikosi hicho baada ya kushiriki michoro na ligi kuu nchini. So I grew up in SA. I played for the provincial teams in Pretoria from under 11 to under 19. And then after after high school I went to the academy, Titans Academy. But because I'm Kenyan by birth, Kenyan documents, I was not able to progress. So the chance came for me to come here to play for Stray and to hopefully make the national team. I want us to get back to ODI status where we're playing against the best in the world. So I think that's what drives all of us and that's what my motivation is. Yeah, his qualities are good. He's up the mark. So he's, he's somebody to watch. 
Yeah, yeah. So when his opportunity comes, he needs to grab it. Obuya alidokeza kuwa anaangazia kukiona kikosi cha wachezaji 30 na kusema kuwa hiyo itaongeza ushindani timuni. I've been looking at for the next two years is to build a strong squad, not a team a squad of 30 players whereby I can pick out of the 30 players whoever and not being worried that he cannot fit in the shoes in the shoes of someone who is replacing so i'm looking to work on a squad in the next two years and that's why also in uganda i'll take a lot of youngsters timu zitakazo maliza katika nafasi mbili za mwanzo zitafuzu kwa division ya tatu ya mashindano hayo bakumu darubini michezo bila shaka mtazamaji kwingine kwa ni kwa mchezaji wa timu ya taifa ya wanawake ya mpira wa wavo Sharon Chepchumba ametia saini kandarasi na timu ya Ugiriki ya Aris Thessaloniki msimu wa mwaka 2022 na 23 Chepchumba sasa amejiunga na orodha ya wachezaji wa kulipwa wa Kenya akiwemo Jane Washu mwenye makao yake nchini Ushelisheli mshambulizi huyu ambaye aliongoza KCB kwenye kwa taji ya bara Afrika hivi majuzi nchini Tunisia alishindwa katika majaribio ya kujiunga na ligi ya mpira wa wavu ya Korea mapema mwaka huu wakati wa huo Chepchumba anatarajiwa kuondoka kwenda Brazil hivi karibuni na timu ya taifa ya wanawake Malkia Strikers kwa maandalizi ya mashindano ya dunia katika andaliwa nchini Uholanzi na Poland kuanzia Septemba 27 hadi Oktoba 12 Na mtazamaji kufikia hapo ndipo tunatamatisha darubini hii leo. Shukrani sana kwa kutazama darubini. Wote wale watazama kiwemo John Paul kutoka Kericho na wengi sana ambao naona jumbe zenu mnasema mlikuwa mkifuatilia darubini. Utakuwa pia unazipata taarifa hizi mida ya saa tatu na vile vile utaendelea kukujuza kila linalojiri kwenye ulingo wa siasa mtazamaji. Mwanzangu ishara imekuwa ni Lensa Odingo na mimi nimekuwa msomaji wako Sarafina Robi kwa na usiku mwanana. Kisi County is majorly known for its bananas and has been thriving on sobstone. Kisi candidates are gearing up for the next governor of this county. What is their agenda for Kisi? Don't miss the Kisi County gubernatorial debate from Kisi University this